Cerebral cavernous malformations are collections of small blood vessels in the brain that can lead to serious medical problems, including headaches, seizures, paralysis, hearing or vision deficiencies, and bleeding in the brain. Well, Dr. Leslie Morrison is a professor of neurology at the University of New Mexico's Clinical Neurosciences Center and joins me this morning with more information. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Nikki. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, this is an important topic, and I'm glad we're covering it. Let's first start by talking more about what cavernous malformations actually are. Uh, as you said, Nikki, these are very uh, small blood vessel malformations that occur both in the brain and in the spinal cord, and they okay. can also affect the skin and the retina. So there's a lot of effects, obviously, but what causes these malformations in the first place? Well, there's two major forms. One is the sporadic form, and we really don't know what causes those, although we do know that radiation increases the risk, so okay. nervous system radiation. The second cause is genetic, and we know mm. there are three genes that cause uh, mutations that cause this, and they're in themselves, they're quite rare, although overall the combined incidence of the disease or prevalence is about one in, up to one in 200 people. So wow. as a whole, it's quite common. I was gonna say, that's a lot more than I thought. So do, do people growing up, if they have one of these three genes, do they know that growing up? Do they know that when they go to the doctor and they get checkups? Is this something they find out later in life? They can find out now because we have commercial genetic testing, okay. but for the most part, it can be quite silent. Mm -hmm. um, some children present early, but for the most average age is about in the 30s. So what are some symptoms that we should look for then? The most common symptoms we see are seizures or epilepsy, so recurrent seizures, bad headaches. Um, up to 50% of our population have headaches, much oh, yeah. more, more like migraine, but not caused by migraine. And the other um, is an acute stroke-like event where you essentially um, lose function, neurological, essential neurological function. Okay, so obviously it can be very overwhelming and scare people, so we want to know solutions. How is the disease treated? Well, up until now, we really don't have good treatments other than treating the symptoms. So okay. we can treat the seizures, we can treat the headaches. But when you have a hemorrhage from one of these blood vessel malformations, you really need neurosurgery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are looking, though, doing research now into other ways to treat the disease. Okay, so if we come to you, like if patients who have the disease, they want to be able to help with the research, what can they do? What can they do as far as the effort goes? Right, so there's... Um, in interestingly, we have many women who are family managers, and they sure. um, include themselves as well as their children in the research and their spouses. Okay. They can call us at 272-3194 okay. and reach our research team to participate in a new treatment trial. Perfect, and of course, all the details are on your screen right now. Take out a pen and paper, write it down. It is so important that we take care of our health first and foremost, and we appreciate the valuable information you provide us with. Thank, Thank you. you so much.